welcome to our channel. Today we're going to be talking about our livestock dog, or great, he's a full Great Pyrenees, Bentley, and the fact that we got him fixed. We want to talk about why, how, what it was like, and if we recommend. So if you're interested in that video, keep on watching. So we got Bentley fixed for two main reasons. The first reason was we're sick of puppies. Uh, he had gotten our German Shepherd Hunter pregnant and we ended up having two litters with her. And that, they're a lot of work. Puppies are tough, man. Anyone who says puppies are easy has never raised puppies. So we were kind of sick of it. We had gotten our fill and that was our main reason uh, was to help avoid more puppies. Um, our second reason, and this one is just as big, uh, but I feel like we could deal with this a little bit differently if we had to, is the fact that Bentley used to run away immediately. Like you put him outside for 30 seconds unsupervised and he's gone. He I'll wants link, to go find so, something. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but I'll link some videos where I've documented him running away in the past. And I'll also just link down below all of our Great Pyrenees videos so you can check out Bentley's whole history if you're curious. Yeah. So we came inside to grab the water we needed to put in the cloners. Bentley decided he was going to stay out there. I quickly saw Hunter come up onto the porch alone. And that's usually what happens when Bentley's going to run away. Is he shoes her off and then stays far away. And you can see right now he's looking past us towards other opportunities, if you will. And if I leave him, I think right about now he's going to try to start running. The other issue is he can hear me talking, so I think he's being on his better behavior. So then we'll talk about how old he was when we got him fixed. We were hoping to be more like the standard parents and get him fixed at one year old, which would have helped mitigate the pregnancies. But our girl Hunter was pregnant when he, we were gonna get him fixed. So then when we called, there was a huge wait list and having the puppies was too overwhelming. So we're like, let's just pause and we'll get him fixed now that she's not in heat once it's convenient and easy. So when he was two years old, we finally had the appointment, got him ready to get fixed and took him to the vet. So we took him to a local livestock clinic to get him treated. They do small animals as well as livestock. And we chose that clinic because they specialize in livestock. So they're really good with the guardian dogs. They know that some guardian dogs aren't even friendly. So it was great. Actually, Bentley was one of their more, you know, star. Wait, easy. He was, he was the easy patient. <laughs> Thank you. He was the easy patient. Um, and so we brought him in in the morning and then they told us that we needed to come get him at about three. So we came to come get him and he was not ready to go until I think about 4.30. Mm -hmm. We were sitting so anxious in the waiting room because he was too loopy. I think they might have done what happened to me with my wisdom teeth, which is they, if you're a strong willed person, you don't always go out or if you're anxious, you don't always go out as well under the anesthesia. So they'll sometimes crank you a little extra bit to make sure you go out. And that's what they did to me and it made it so hard to wake up afterwards because you have this small window of time when you need to wake up. Bentley was the same way. They couldn't get him up and they kept calling on the intercom like, Bentley's parents are here. Can you please bring Bentley up? And nobody was bringing Bentley up. And, we and of course it made us nervous and scared. We're like, what's wrong with Bentley? Why isn't he coming out? There's been so many other dogs that come have come and gone. And, go. and yes. like, where is our dog? Uh, but we tried to stay calm and we were just sitting there waiting. And then finally he comes out just staggering and so he looked weak. drunk, like a night at the club. Like he was <laughs> messed up. They loved him though. He said he was great. But the cost, in case anybody's wondering, for a full grown Great Pyrenees fix with $700 in our area. So it's quite pricey, but definitely worth it because now we don't have to worry about him getting anybody pregnant. I do have to say though, uh, the reason it was so pricey was the, this is a little TMI here if you don't want to hear it, just, you know, skip. But uh, the reason it was so pricey is they actually called me while they were doing the operation and they said that basically sometimes with older male dogs that, you know, two years, three years old when they get fixed, they're, uh, sack for lack of a better word it can cause infection so they asked if we wanted them to basically like staple it up and kind of trim it yeah trim it and mold it a little bit so it won't be infected we got them a ball lift yeah we got them a ball lift that's a good way to say it <laughs> uh and that was actually almost 300 dollars just for that all right so let's talk about his recovery real quick um when we got him home we'll show you a clip right here of what he looked like uh wow poor guy <laughs> tongue dripping yeah tongue dripping sick probably very spinny um but once he kind of slept that off and, and got uh, some of the anesthesia out of his system 
The recovery process was pretty easy. Um, they gave us a cone. They recommended that we buy a cone, actually. So we bought one, and we turned out we didn't use it once. I do not was, recommend cones. Uh -uh. We've literally always bought them for our animals when they get fixed, and we never use it. Mm -hmm. I think it's just important to try to plan your life accordingly and open up a window of time where you can kind of be around your dog, or maybe grandma can come watch the dog, mm -hmm. or whatever. Somebody just keep eyes on him for a few days. And luckily, we got him done on a Friday, so we got to watch him Friday night all day Saturday and all day Sunday before we went back to work. So that was kind of nice because we kind of, we knew his like ticks of licking and when he would lick and when he wouldn't, and we were trying to really, you know, encourage him not to lick it. And he did great. He didn't bust a stitch open. Well, and I was gonna say one really nice thing is nowadays they do dissolvable stitches. And so they're actually mm -hmm. taking the skin and folding it underneath the stitch. It's almost like a double-sided piece of tape and they're just squishing it together. Yeah. So for your dog to hurt themselves with those, they really have to pull their, like, cause it's one thing if your dog wants to pull out a foreign stitch, I kind of yeah. understand that. Mm -hmm. But when they're just, they have to pull with their own skin, and I think that's kind of counterintuitive for yeah. dogs. So it's pretty re revolutionary discovery they made with that. Mm -hmm. Do you like your little shock collar? Helps you be a good boy all the time. Can you sit for me? Show me your sit, Bentley. Good boy, yeah, smart. So let's talk about how he changed in case anybody's curious. That was my biggest curiosity when we first got him home. I'm like, he's gonna be a whole new dog. I'm so excited. And then when we actually got him home, he really wasn't much different. We didn't let him outside. We still had, well, we still had to maintain our normal protocol for keeping him in the yard, which is watching him very intently, following him around the yard with his shock collar so we can make sure that he doesn't jump the fence. Um, so that didn't change for probably like a month before yeah. we really started to see his demeanor change. First thing that definitely happened pretty quick was he got grumpy. He's a very grumpy dog now. He tends to be a lot more defiant. Our old Bentley was so sweet and just like very people pleaser dog, do anything you wanted, really look to us for any everything. Mm -hmm. And now he's much more grumpy, independent, just, you know, a grumpy, castrated old guy. And I, I feel bad, honestly. Yeah, but, definitely. <laughs> but he's not horny anymore. That was one of the funny things to watch him do was when he first started to sense, cause Hunter is not fixed yet. We might try to make a video on her getting fixed if we get her fixed, but you'll see if we recommend this at the end and see what our opinion is. So because Hunter is still intact, when she started to get close to her period recently, Bailey took such a big whiff of her vagina trying to figure out how he felt. And he was so sad when he realized there was no, no urge, nothing there. And he just kind of walked off. So having him fixed has really helped us as far as that, but it definitely has had its give and take. He doesn't look over the fence anymore, which is really great. When we let him outside, we're able to really do other things. For example, on Sunday, we washed the car, Bentley hung out, did his own thing outside, and there's no ill will behind yeah, his eyes. He's not sure. looking to run away anymore. Before, when we would let him outside, he would go straight to our fence, to the, to the boundary, basically, and look above it and go, hmm, okay, that's where I can get over and just jump it. Um, but it's really nice to see him be able to look at the fencing now and he's looking through it. Like he gets that there's something there that he's not supposed to pass. So that's really nice. Yeah. So the last question for everybody is do we recommend or do we regret getting badly fixed? And I think the answer to that is that if we had the proper fencing to keep Bentley in our pasture with our animals, sorry the parakeets are making, they're always chatty at this hour. If, you're, if your budgies are chatty, leave a comment. <laughs> um, but if we had proper fencing to keep Bentley in, I think we probably would stand by keep getting Hunter fixed instead and then keeping Bentley intact because his demeanor was great. I think the testosterone is really good for helping his protective instincts. Although he is great as he is, I would not say his protective instincts are at all hindered by being fixed, but I want to throw that out there. I just think the testosterone is handy if you need it. And if you have a six foot no climb fence that you can keep your great ponies in, I don't recommend that you fix unless you're worried about puppies. Yep. So I'm happy with our decision. I think it was worth it and and it's definitely made our lives a lot easier, a lot better when we can let him out a little bit more stress-free going, okay, yeah, sure. We still got to sort of keep an eye on you, but uh, he's so good now that we are learning more and more that he needs more and more trust. And my biggest fear when he was running away was him impregnating other dogs. Mm -hmm. So that alone is really nice because even if he was to run away, now I'm just worried about him getting put in the pound, but I have his collar on him. So like if he runs away, hopefully somebody will call me. We have a local Facebook group where everybody will say, oh, your dog is here if it ran away. So I don't really worry so much about that. And it's been nice to be able to push the envelope a little bit mm -hmm. and see if we can get him to not run away when we're not out there and stuff. So it's been good. Yeah. So that's Pretty birds. Pretty birds can talk. Good. They get quiet when you say that. So, without further ado, I hope you, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. When in doubt, love it out. We'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.